Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's doing fine. I really do. I want to come out by saying a lot of people made a couple of comments on Dabu's video that he did last night about him getting attacked. He was literally talking about his PC, not his YouTube channel. And, buddy, I feel for you. I've lost six computers. I know exactly what you're going through. I really do. And... If you need any help, let me know. And now we're going to go to a video that it's going to be a long winter. And I want y'all to understand that it's going to be a long winter. It's about 48 minutes long. And the reason why we're making this video mainly. And so you can see all of the corporate entities that is controlling your lives from the media, from the police, to the government, to your health care, to the drug industry, to lawyers, to judges, to police officers. It, every entity that you can possibly imagine that is happening to you. And what I don't understand is why more of us are not literally following and seeing and talking about how corporate interest and specifying the corporate interest that we didn't know for 143 years that has controlled us and right now they're in super super overdrive trying to steal and take every sovereign right that you have and I'm not talking sovereign citizen because when you believe that you're a citizen a sovereign citizen then you've dropped the ball because sovereign citizen citizen itself means that you give up your rights when you sign on the dotted line for a loan a home loan, anything to that effect, car loan, house loan, motorcycle, boats, anytime you sign for a loan, you sign into the corporate interest. I'm sorry I'm telling you this, but it's true. There's no lying to this. You give up your rights when this happens. Over and over, every time you do it. There's things in this video that you can see where religion's not allowed, like you're seeing. People take vehicles away from you. It, it, it is so bad, folks. I don't understand why we all, we all, on YouTube, and our web pages, and all of us guys, don't aim for the same agenda. Some of us fight different angles at all times. All against this person, that person, or this person. Talking about Nibiru, Common Ice on, Ellen, and all of this stuff. And we're all talking about, in the long run, we're all saying the same things. Which is terrible. 
Because no matter what's in space, we're never going to know because of the corporate interest that wants to keep you in the dark. And don't think it's just your government. It's corporate interest. Because, see, if you knew that there was some kind of chaos, whether it is, whether it ain't, I'm not saying that there's some kind of chaos coming from space. I'm not saying that there's a chaos coming from an EMP, man-made, or from the sun. I'm just saying if it was to ever, any of those things were ever to occur, do you think you would ever know about it? Do you think that any YouTuber is going to be able to tell you when it's going to happen? Do you think that any of us has got the knowledge, not necessarily, not to say we don't have the knowledge, but to say that we have the inside scoop of when it's going to happen? No, we don't. There ain't a YouTuber out here that can tell you for an absolute fact that anything positive is going to happen. There ain't a newscast out here that's going to tell you anything positive that's going to happen. Because they only get the information that's told to them to tell you. That's the way it's always been. That's the way it's always going to be and until, until we the people have had enough of corporate interest controlling our lives. You know, it's like this IC chip that she's talking about being in your credit card. It's going to come out on the, in 2015. It's just another way to keep up with you. I want to tell you all something else. <clears throat> A few years ago, here in Jacksonville, there's a, a building that is built by CSX. Now, some people, they may be a little disappointed about me telling this. If they ever see the video, don't quite care. But they're very big into EMPs of all sorts, man-made or solar effects. They are. Mainly because they have a lot of rails on the track, you know, you know, the tracks, the rail. All pretty much ungrounded or used to be. Just laying on wood. But the reason why I'm telling you this story is because this is a little bit for Dabo as well. He said remotely hacked, and that's very possible. And I mean wirelessly, folks. I don't mean coming through the Internet. I meant wirelessly, completely remote. It has to be done within a, a range of being close to his house, but it can be done. The reason why I'm telling you that is because a microprocessor in a computer has a frequency. It transmits and receives. Also in that frequency is the code to the processor and to everything that it runs. So in an aspect, if you have the equipment, if you have the equipment to do so, and you're some kind of corporate entity or government agency, meaning corporate entity, you could very well possibly hack a computer and it's not just possible, it has been done by other folks. They make a Faraday cage out of a tent, a special design tent, cost about 50 grand, that they put up that has a floor, sidewalls, the whole nine yards. It has a coating over it. 
that makes it a Faraday cage to keep the processor from transmitting outside of the system. They put it, if they got information that they need to put on a computer, they put up this tent. And they put the computer inside there and they put all the information they need to on it. And they cannot transmit the signal out of there. They can't receive a signal either. But they put all the information on the computer and send it out as an email, but not until they've already put all the information up and they've put it in and sealed it up so no access can be done to it and coded. Then they come outside and transmit it back to where it can get out. But it's already coded and sealed so no one can get the information. They get a sealed inf sealed piece of package, but they can't open. Now, I know that some people don't think that I have enough knowledge to know these things, but sorry, I do. Monty will tell you that they have the technology to do the things that they do, and they do. He's not telling you no lies. That's like they know where that plane went down. They know what hit that plane. And I'm talking about MH17. That's created all these people to get all upset. And they also have the technology to know who ISIS is. It's a U.S. corporate government or entity that works for the United States government. And they do. Sorry about my pop belly pig. She just woke up. She wants she wants something. Of course she wants something. Always wants something. She's, it's a little spoiled brat. Point being, folks, is that Faraday cage I built. And it's in a room in the CSX building. And it's on one of the top floors, like on the 22nd floor. I didn't design it, but I did help build it. And I did help install it in the CSX building in Jacksonville, Florida. Now, I can tell you that when you're high up in a building like that, you got tremendous tremendous phone service the higher you are. When I was in that building, I, I mean, I had several towers that was hooked up to my phone that I could get signal out of. And to let y'all know this, this is how strong this little thing was. Now, this thing was about three and a half inches thick. It had a sheet of aluminum on the outside, a sheet of aluminum on the inside. Then it had, on the inside, it had some galvanized, it had a spacer, a rubber spacer. Then I had a sheet of coal roll galvanized steel with a spacer. And this repeated over and over. And then a wire mesh with a plastic coating. And then it got the repeat of all of these metals several times till it was about three and a half inches thick. Now, the reason that was done, and it had a floor as well, the reason why that was done is so when you would walk into there and you shut the door, no RF signal from the outside world could come in and no RF signal from inside could go out. That was to protect processors from EMPs and from hackers. When I walked inside there, I had no signal with my cell phone. None whatsoever. 
Centers for Disease Control. With the door shut, no signal. With the door open, I only had one bar. But with the door closed, it was like I didn't even have a cell phone. It wouldn't do nothing. It was dead. So people... I wouldn't exactly call that exactly a Faraday cage, but that was the, what, that's pretty much what it is. But it's not like a Faraday cage that you see that people have made little small cages. They do some work in the same similar matter, but signal can go and come in those and air. But if you close one up, and you make it a sealed unit, it's extremely tight. Now, y'all see this information that's on here right now about the executive order that Obama amended about this Ebola virus. Not really about the Ebola virus, but it's kind of odd that he done this just before they brought a victim to the United States. So obviously... They are already prepping I also want to add the that this man went on vacation Americans. a day and a half US ago. In the areas have distributed messages to US citizens regarding the Folks, it is entirely up to y'all to spread the message, to show people everything that you have seen, everything that you hear. It's already killed nine this year. That is going on. If you don't make videos, it's up to you, the people, to explain, to show, write a little article on your Facebook or your Twitter. Well, you can't do that on Twitter, but you can do it on Facebook. You can do it on StumbleUpon. Depends on what you have. You can do some things on Twitter or just share it on Twitter. In the water supply. Tonight, the scramble for bottled water but it's this, people. It's this. It's no corporate when it will greed. To drink again. Tonight, a state of emergency you know, everybody thinks that the ga gas crisis, or they don't remember the gas crisis. We were paying $1.75, $1.80 a gallon in some parts of the country at the time. Daddy Bush put it back on the stock market so it could fluctuate. He took off the caps that Nixon put on back in the when we had the gas gas crisis back in the 70s when we couldn't get gas. The barrel of oil then was like $72 a barrel. Well, I think we're paying like 78 right now, maybe 79 a barrel right now. But we're still paying almost $4 a gallon for gas. Now, when this first happened to us, when gas went up so high, everybody was living to the brink of their paychecks because the corporate greed was giving everybody a loan. Now, those people were living to the max at a dollar seventy-eight, eight, seventy-five, seventy-eight a gallon with their house payment, their food, you know, their whole nine yards. And I'm talking about people that was making $14 an hour because this happened to me at the time. I was only making $14 an hour at that time. And I had a house, had a light bill, I had cable, I had a telephone, and I had internet. All that rolled up into my telephone and my cable and the whole nine yards. I could literally make my bills at that time completely. I could. But as soon, as soon as they went, to almost five dollars a gallon, it was four dollars and eighty cents a gallon for all those periods of months before it ever come down again. 
it got so bad that I was having to really doing a lot of serious different jobs just to make ends meet. Because I couldn't afford it. Gas went up. My gas bill going back 50 miles to work a day was killing me. It happened as they were working on a and gas. At the historic cottage. Because I was equipped with a truck, not a Toyota that gets 30 miles to the gallon. I was getting about 18. Corrections employees who are still working at the empty prison. So my gas bill was about seventy seventy five dollars a week. Sometimes more. Depends on what day I, during the week that I filled up. Some corrections employees made So you take in you're going from $30 to fill up your tank to $60 or $70 to fill up your tank. Well, there's $30 that you've taken out of your check a week to pay for your house payment or your light bill or your cable bill. Well, I had to turn off the, the uh, TV cable and went to satellite. And that was the free stuff that I could get for my kids. You know, a point of it is, is people have forgotten. People have an attention span that is very short. They forget. As long as everything is going okay. But the economy got bad, people, because of fuel. When fuel goes up, shipment goes up. When shipment goes up, the product on the shelf that you buy goes up. And it don't go up by a little bit. It goes up by a lot. Your food has gone up by a lot. You used to take $100, go in and buy your $100 worth of food, and you'd come out with a basket full. They've cut the baskets in some of your supermarkets now to little ones. You got these little bitty carts. And you can spend $100 in one of them. And you don't have nothing. A lot of you out there understand what I'm telling you, and you know what I'm saying. What reason did they give you? Um, they weren't sure because it is terrible that we the people are having to go through this every single day. Everything has gone up so much out of your paycheck. They're trying to up. They're trying to up the minimum wage to ten dollars an hour. Well, I hate to tell you all this, but ten dollars an hour is still not enough for people to live on. It's not. If you got two house members in a house and they both make ten dollars an hour. That's twenty dollars an hour. But that's eighty hours a week. It's not forty. That's why family members have two jobs. One of them might make twenty dollars an hour. The other one might make ten. So that's still thirty. That's still not a month. It really ain't. Now, there is some folks out there that got extremely well-to-do jobs. They make $100,000, $150,000 a year, and their wife make, make $80,000, $150,000 a year as well. That's $300,000 a year that they're making. But there ain't that many folks out there got that kind of jobs. There ain't that many of those jobs out there. I don't feel bad for those folks, but it's those folks that aren't helping us. They don't see the corporate greed. 
They don't. That's the folks that we have to see to show the corporate greed that is affecting all of us. We also need to get the fuel back under control. Where it generally should be somewhere around dollar seventy five dollar eighty maybe two dollars a gallon which is why this whole incident as a lawyer make them put that cat back on came shocking to me so if I'm a parent what should I be worried so the people can look at in make a living of the NSA there is no corporation that people have had like the oil companies their phone records like the refineries that need to make Twenty to thirty billion dollars every quarter, or whatever, whatever it was, uh, a quarter or a month in profit. They don't need to make that much money. I don't mean it in a disrespectful way, and I know that it's okay. But when you change a law to make it better for one thing, you hurt it for something else. This country has built itself on that cap for a long time. And it didn't hurt the refinery, refinery because they're still in business. And now they ought to be well to do with plenty of profit. They could put that cap back on to help the people. But all of us have got but we haven't forgotten how they're treating us, have we? Like they doing to this guy right here on the ground right now. People, there is so much in this country going on. So many rights and laws that has been shoved down our throats. That is just terrible. If it's this bad for someone like me, and I'm 53, if I'm telling you that it's, this is bad, when I was 20 years old, this shit didn't go on like this. That was 30 years ago. Some of the things that I did when I was 17, 18 years old, and 20, these same police officers right here would have ended up killing kids at my age at that time. That's what they're doing now. A lot of those kids that grew up in the back then 20 years ago, you know, 35 years ago would have had we wouldn't have made it. I'm talking to some of you people out there right now that's making that 150 to 75 thousand dollars a year. I'm talking to you guys. You know that. You feel it in your heart. You see it. No one has to hold your hand and coach you. Sometimes some people need to discuss, like I'm doing, so you understand where this comes from. Maybe you've watched too much TV. Russia has announced it's carrying out new military exercises. Maybe you've had a party life. Maybe you've just been too busy. Doesn't matter. All this is happening. We're all in this together. Ebola. We have the, the chance of all getting affected with Ebola now. Because they brought it to the United States. Instead of taking their crews over there to contain it, they bring it here. Because it's American citizen. Which is all good and fine to me. But the point of it is, is this. Wouldn't it have been better off to went there and concealed up units 
like they did in the movie E.T. where they contained the house in plastic because they didn't know what it was. Remember? They could have did that over there instead of bringing that over here, taking it across the ocean to another country and had to go through several countries to get to that area. Whether it's airborne, partially airborne, it doesn't matter. We have that threat now. <clears throat> and ever since MH17, we also have the threat of thermonuclear war with Russia or China. Doesn't matter. One backs the other, the other backs this one. All depending on the elite which way they want it to go. And then we got all that stuff in Iraq with ISIS and them killing folks as well. Folks, there is just so much like this that it's just terrible. And that's just like, that's just like Dabu, sorry for the dog. That's just like Dabu's channel getting hacked by... Sorry about the dogs again. But it's like Dabu's channel getting affected, infected with a, a remote hack to destroy all of his videos that he already had uploaded to his computer. Keeping a backup for him. That's bad, man. Someone that will do that is probably one of your worst people in the world. They have no cares about no one or nothing. And they do it intentionally to hurt and destroy a person's reputation or name. There's been a lot of things happen on YouTube with a lot of people. Dutch Sense is one of them too. He's been crucified over and over again. And Dabu. S.O. Monograph. Me. There's a few other folks out there as well that's gotten hit very hard. And those same people have thought it was other YouTubers. Only because they come out and they talk about it. But in fact, it really wasn't another YouTuber. It was people playing games on the inside, screwing with other people's lives. Making it think that it was one person or another. Trying to make a name or someone trying to make a name for themselves by using a rebound bounce off of someone else. That's happened more than one time by more than one person. Even some of the guys that I'm talking about have done that as well. It is a... Hmm. It's a publicity stunt, basically. That's just like uh, Mark Dice come out yesterday, or the day before yesterday. He come out with a video talking about Robin Williams, and he was talking about they were all gonna make it a conspiracy theory about Mark about uh, Robin Williams dying. Well, here's your publicity stunt. He said he was calling them all conspiracy mongers and fear mongers and all that. Well, Kate got smeared in his face because he come out and said that before it happened. And just in the way that they come out and reported the incident, okay, they smeared mud all in his face because the way that Robin Williams was supposed to die, if you got a brain in your head, 
which there's plenty of you out there to do, including Mark Dice, has got to know that there's something wrong with that story. He's got to admit that for himself. So they smeared mud in his face, all because of what he said, trying to make him look bad. And I don't disagree with everything that Mark Knight does. And I don't agree with everything he does. That's including everybody. We all have our own opinions. But my point of it is, is this. If all of us guys out there, including Mark Dice, S.O. Dabu, Monograph, Duck Sense, all of us, I, I'm not including, I'm, I'm just giving you big names that I can think of off the top of my head. If we don't start pushing this corporate entity down all of our friends' throats, and I mean this, to show them what's happening to us, we're going to lose this battle because the corporate interest, it, the corporate interest is going to win. Everything's corporate, folks. Everything. Everything you do. Agenda 21 has got a corporate name. Okay, you work on Agenda 21, you work on Agenda 21, and they change the name. They change it to Agenda 35. Well, you don't know what Agenda 35 is, but you got rid of Agenda 21, right? Well, they changed the name, but they're still working on it. It's Agenda 35 now. You get my point? That's all it is. You can't fix one without fixing the beginning. So you can't fix nothing without the beginning being fixed. You got to get rid of the corporate interest. We don't get rid of corporate interest. We're going to lose this battle. It's all up to us to get rid of the battle. Are we going to have these type of vehicles that you're seeing right there every day on our streets? More and more every day on our streets to take our freedoms, to take our rights, to beat us, to spray us with mace, to spray us with uh, bombs, that mace bomb, whatever the hell you want to call it, tear gas, all that stuff. You're going to have it every day. Anytime something happens, you're going to have it every day, every day, over and over and over and over and over again. It's getting that bad, folks. Wake up to this fact that it's getting that bad. We're in trouble. Spread this message to everyone you know. Help out. Go to the links in the below section. Spread the links there. Help out. Much love to y'all from my cold dead hands. Abolish corporate government. Y'all have a good day. Go to the links in the below section for updates every day. Abolish corporate government from my cold dead hands. Much